From the grave to the skies, the U.S. can now raise thousands of fighter jets from the dead, each of them wielding advanced technology that even the F-35 Lightning II lacks. This technology would make these fighter jets fly without a pilot in the cockpit, but rather via remote control. Of the possible thousands of fighters to be resurrected, one stands out, a fighter that protected the U.S. before the F-35 and the F-22 Raptor, a fighter known as the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon. A revolutionary fighter, the F-16 was the first fighter to feature a fly-by-wire system, the first fighter purpose-built to pull 9G maneuvers, among other firsts. And now it's back in the spotlight, more lethal than ever, and like a drone with no pilot to lose, more daring than ever. These and more are what to expect from a resurrected army of F-16 drones. It all began with a new proposal from war analyst Zachary Callenborn, who proposed that older aircraft, such as the F-16, could be reactivated, revamped, and released into battlefield front lines as armed drones. The benefits of this? Substantial. The Air Force's overall fleet would grow, boosting the number of planes capable of combat. It would also subsidize the high cost that the Pentagon is expected to spend on a fleet of similar size. Then there's the fact that it allows for a more fitting end to these glorious fighters than simply tossing them into massive aircraft trash out in the desert. But without a doubt, the most valuable benefit of this concept is the minimization of risks to pilots. This alone allows a fleet of undead F-16s to carry out a whole new level of dangerous missions, from being used as decoys to becoming giant cruise missiles by loading up bombs and kamikazeing into targets. In terms of ease of executing this concept, the Air Force and other flying services already have the planes and the technology to convert them into unmanned platforms. In fact, the Air Force already converts standard F-16s to uncrewed QF-16s, with the QF-16s operating as target drones that mimic high-performance enemy fighters to give fighter pilots a taste of what it means to take on advanced adversaries. And it's quite fitting that the F-16 was chosen for this role because it has proven just how badass of a plane it is. What makes it so badass? It's time to find out. Designed as an air superiority fighter, evolved into a successful multi-role aircraft, and served in the air forces of 26 nations, the F-16 from General Dynamics is one aircraft that other aircraft look to be. And this is all thanks to some key design features, lethal armament, ergonomic cockpit, and a powerful propulsion system. Key Design Features The F-16 is the first aircraft to use a fly-by-wire flight control system that helps make it an agile aircraft. It is also the first aircraft purpose-built to withstand 9G forces during high-angle maneuvers, permitting its pilots to really dig deep into their acrobatic skills and make the most of them. However, withstanding 9G forces was an improvement from what was expected. The lightweight fighter program, which birthed the F-16, only required the fighter to be capable of achieving 7.33 G forces. It also only called for a structural life of 4,000 flight hours with 80% internal fuel, but the F-16 was unveiled to be about twice as good as that, with an airframe life of 8,000 flight hours on fuel, internal fuel. This extra endurance allowed for the aircraft's mission change from solely air-to-air -air combat to multi-role operations. Other innovations introduced by the F-16 include a frameless bubble canopy for better visibility, a side-mounted control stick, and a reclined seat to reduce G-force effects on the pilot. All these while remaining much smaller, much lighter, and less expensive than its predecessors. Armament Equipped with an internal 511-round M61 Vulcan cannon, the F-16 has always been designed to be armed to the teeth, whether in its earlier versions or the more recent ones. Early F-16s could be armed with up to six AIM-9 Sidewinder heat-seeking short-range air-to-air missiles by employing rail launchers on each wingtip, as well as radar-guided AIM-7 Sparrow medium-range air-to-air missiles in a weapons mix. The more recent versions support the AIM-120 AMRAAM, which U.S. aircraft often mount on their wingtip to reduce wing flutter. The F-16 can also carry various other air-to-air -air missiles, a wide variety of air-to-ground missiles, rockets, conventional or nuclear bombs, electronic warfare countermeasures, navigation, targeting or weapons pods, and fuel tanks across its hardpoints. Cockpit and Ergonomics The F-16 gifts its pilot with the right environment to win dogfights, starting with an exceptional field of view. 
The single-piece bird-proof polycarbonate bubble canopy provides 360-degree all-round visibility with a 40-degree look-down angle over the side of the aircraft and a 15-degree angle over the nose compared to the 12 to 13 degrees of preceding aircraft. Furthermore, the F-16's canopy lacks the forward bow frame found on many fighters, which is an obstruction to a pilot's forward vision. Its ACES-2 ejection seat is reclined at an unusual tilt-back angle of 30 degrees, allowing the aircraft to accommodate taller pilots and increase G-force tolerance, although subsequent fighters adopted a more modest 20-degree tilt-back angle. The F-16 set the standard for centralized hands-on throttle and stick controls to enhance pilots' degree of control of the aircraft during high-G combat maneuvers. For enhanced situational awareness and flexibility too, the F-16 has a head-up display, multifunction displays on both sides, night vision goggles, and the Boeing Joint Helmet Mounted Queuing System that enables targeting based on where the pilot's head faces using high off foresight missiles like the AIM-9X. Propulsion The F-16 is a single-engine aircraft. The engine in an F-16 depends on which F-16 is being considered. This is because the F-16 has two engine supplies, Pratt & Whitney with the F-100 PW200 afterburning turbofan and General Electric with the F-110 GE100 turbofan. Both engines, in a silent battle, were constantly upgraded to keep up with the times and with each other. The max rating of these engines on American F-16s would be as high as 29,160 lbf for the Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW200 and 29,588 lbf for the General Electric F-110 GE100. These engines thrust their F-16s to a blurry max speed of Mach 2.05, a maximum range of 2,620 miles, and a space-bordering flight ceiling of 58,000 feet. These capabilities sent chills across militaries of the world, including the US's arch-nemesis at the time, the Soviet Union, which spent years developing a fighter that could take on the F-16. That fighter was introduced as the MiG-29. How well did it match the F-16? The Mikoyan MiG-29 took its first flight one year before the F-16 was introduced into service. It's a twin-engine fighter aircraft developed as an air superiority fighter. Like the F-16, the MiG-29 is popular in the export market, with more than 30 nations having operated the aircraft. Like the F-16, the MiG-29 can withstand up to 9G maneuvers. However, unlike the F-16, the MiG-29 does not have a fly-by-wire control system nor does it have the revolutionary hands-on throttle and stick control capability. Nonetheless, it is agile, with excellent instantaneous and sustained turn performance, high alpha capability, and a general resistance to spins that could almost match its American counterpart. The differences between both aircraft would become clearer with a closer look at their power plant and armament. Power Plant the F-16 is powered by a single engine that produces up to 29,588 lbf of thrust, while the MiG-29 is powered by two widely spaced Klimov RD-33 turbofan engines, each capable of producing a maximum thrust of 18,300 lbf, to give the MiG-29 a total combined thrust of 36,600 lbf. This edge in thrust output compared to the F-16 gives the MiG-29 a higher top speed of over Mach 2.3, about 12% higher than the Mach 2.05 of the F-16. The MiG-29 also flies higher with a service ceiling of 59,000 feet compared to the 58,000 feet service ceiling of the F-16. The F-16 flies twice as far though with a max range of 2,620 miles compared to the MiG-29's 1,300 miles. However, the impact of these differences, although deciding to some degree, would likely take a backseat to the impact of each fighter's armament. Armament Armament for the MiG-29 includes a single 100-round GSH-30-130 mm cannon in the port wing route, which only allows a few seconds of firing before running out of ammo. The MiG-29 has seven hardpoints with a payload capacity of 8,800 pounds of weapons, consisting of three types of rockets, six types of missiles, and six 1,466-pound conventional bombs. This falls behind the F-16's 17,000 pounds of payload shared across 11 hardpoints and consisting of three different types of rockets, 10 types of air-to-air, -air, air-to-surface and anti-ship missiles, and 15 types of conventional and nuclear bombs. Enough to wreak havoc to any enemy aircraft, ships, defense systems, or entire cities. Such is the caliber of fighter that could be awoken from retirement to take to the skies for its country once again, but this time, again, without a pilot sitting in the cockpit.
Over 4,600 F-16s have been built, and although not all for the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Air Force does have enough of them to make an undead army of them to overwhelm adversaries. A real-life zombie apocalypse in a way. For this to work though, the Air Force needs help. They need you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. That would be all for this video. Thanks for watching.